Hi everyone, back today to talk about finding time. So this week I'm doing like a whole section on finding the time to cross stitch, finding the time for our hobbies. So yesterday was like step one and we talked about getting our mind right, trying not to feel guilty. Today is step two. Now yesterday, for some reason, I think it was because my live paused and I had to, because I had to X out my battery dying, uh, my timing was off. So fingers crossed today, when you're watching the replay, my timing is not off. Um, but step two today, what we're going to do is, I recommend you do this this week or over the next few days, is just start tracking your time. Now, I don't really like like writing down every single thing I do every day. And like, oh, I spent an hour cooking like I don't really like writing it down if you don't mind doing that like writing it down can definitely help but really it's just about noticing just noticing where our time is going through the week so for example let's start with 24 hours so everyone has 24 hours in one full day cycle sun up to sun up the next day is 24 hours so the biggest chunk of our time generally goes on sleep. You can tell today I didn't have much sleep last night. Don't have any makeup on today either, so I'm not looking my best because I had like five hours sleep last night, which was my own fault. But the biggest chunk goes on sleep. So generally, if we're lucky, most of us get between seven and eight hours of sleep. If you work shifts or you're in like a busy season or something it might be less than that but generally we all have 20 I mean eight hours of sleep seven to eight hours so we'll take our 24 hours we'll take off eight hours for sleep now we have 16 hours left in the day okay so that's the biggest chunk of time where does your next biggest chunk of time go for a lot of us it could be work or it could just be like looking after the kids at home all day maybe you're homeschooling and you homeschool for a set amount of hours a day Maybe you look after like a relative or an older person, like wherever your next biggest chunk of time of day goes, take that off. So for me, I spend between five and six hours a day working. Um, so where was I up to? 16, take away six. I have 10 hours in the day left. Okay, so in the next biggest chunk of time, where does that go? And try and make this things that happen kind of every day, it's a bit easier. So for me, five days a week, I'm doing the school run. The school run takes half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the afternoon, sometimes a bit longer in the afternoon actually. Hour of my day, gone. Now I have nine hours of day left. Maybe you commute to work every day, maybe you also do the school run. Maybe you do multiple school runs if you have kids in different schools so it takes you even longer. Maybe you're homeschooling so you don't commute, but maybe you go to classes every week with your homeschool kids. Maybe you take them to gymnastics or I know there's not many classes open right now, but in like a normal-ish week, where do you go in the week? Um, maybe you have like set appointments every week where you go to, maybe you're going to therapy every week or maybe you go to like set appointments or set things that happen, like take all those hours off your 24 hours, all those things that tend to happen every day just start taking those off and then we're going to start getting a little more like specific and did you notice how with all of those things you don't need to write that down most of us know that already like we don't need to write down all those little things every day because most of the time we know how long that takes every day um but then you can start getting like a little more specific and for me i think the biggest time suck for a lot of us is unfortunately our phones so i know many people know this but if you don't know this you can go into the battery settings of your phone and have a look at how long a day your screen is open on your phone now that doesn't necessarily mean that's how long you are on your phone because for me my lock screen doesn't lock again for five minutes because i like when i'm stitching from a pattern on my phone i like the screen to stay open as long as possible so sometimes like if I open my phone and leave it and forget to lock it again, I'm not on my phone for those five minutes. So you kind of have to take that with a pinch of salt, but it can be very illuminating when you look at how many hours a day you spend on your phone. 
Mine at the minute is always between four to five hours a day. So I only had nine hours a day left anyway, and now I've just spent four to five of those on my phone. That only leaves like me four hours a day left in my day for like all the other things that need doing. So really like look at your battery. Now, from what I can tell in your phone settings as well, it doesn't count. Like if you're, maybe you listen to audiobooks. I listen to a lot of audiobooks. I listen to a lot of podcasts. If you're listening to something like that and your phone is locked, I don't think it counts it in the time. But you have to look. You can go into each app specifically and have a look how long on each app you spent. My highest is always Safari, like just the general internet things because I don't have a lot of apps on my phone. Um, I tend to just do everything on the internet apart from Instagram really. Um, so that's always my biggest one. But if you have lots of apps on your phone, you can go in app by app and have a look. Like how long are you spending on Instagram? How long are you spending on Facebook? How long are you spending in your emails? And you can have a look at that. Now, obviously for a lot of us right now, if you're working at home, you might be working on your phone. I work on my phone a lot, especially with Instagram and social media. That does tend to happen from my phone. So some of those hours might go into your work hours, but not all of them. <laughs> some of those hours might go into like your hobby as well, because for me, like I read on my phone, on my Kindle, and that's obviously a hobby. So count that, like still count that into time that's gone um like out of your day but also know like I'm I'm not saying every hour spent in our day is like wasted or like not necessary um especially with our phones like sometimes we can feel guilty for going on our phones please don't feel guilty for being on your phone um enjoy it but also just notice how long you are spending on there and you know like for me like I said I read on my phone I have a kindle on my phone I have audible on my phone and at the minute, me and my daughter are learning to roller skate. So we're watching a lot of YouTube videos um, of an evening, learning how to do the different moves and spins and everything. So, you know, some time on our phone is spent towards our hobbies as well. So just like notice, go into each app. Um, I think for a lot of us, social media is the biggest one that kind of sucks our time. We go onto Pinterest or onto Twitter and then we're just down a rabbit hole. <laughs> we can't get out of it. Um, so yeah, just start noticing. And then when you have like, when you know like where all your time is going, it's much easier to see time in your day where you might be like doing something where you could cross stitch as well, or you could do your hobby as well. So for example, like if you spend, let me think, like an hour commuting each day, if you're not doing the driving, maybe you're on a train or on a bus, you could spend the time during the commute cross-stitching or reading or whatever. I'm sure a lot of you do that already. But really doing this exercise of just noticing where our time goes, number one, it can kind of shock us into realising like, oh, maybe I do have more time than I think. Or number two, it might like, um, I've just lost my like train of thought. <laughs> oh, it'll make us notice like times in the day where we could squeeze in some like hobby time, crafting time, cross-stitch time. Um, so it's just all about being present and just noticing where your time is actually going. So then you know if you can squeeze in more cross stitch or like maybe you realise like, wow, I really do a lot. No wonder I don't have time for my hobby at the end of the day. I'm doing too much. I'm trying to squeeze in like a 30 hour full day into 24 hours in a day. And then that can maybe make you realize like I need help with something maybe you need a cleaner maybe you need someone to help with childcare. like it can just make you notice things and I just want to like reiterate don't feel guilty if like you spend 10 hours a day on your phone then you spend 10 hours a day on your phone and please please just don't feel guilty like yesterday I said we like we about guilt as well and how we kind of have to get comfortable with it so if you do feel guilty just don't feel bad like don't make it make you feel bad like notice like oh I feel guilty for this for being on my phone for so long but just be okay with that that's fine if you want to change that you can um but then if you just make just maybe you just realize like oh I just spend a lot of time on my phone and that's okay um and, you know there might be other things in your day like so I only kind of went through like the phone then but like some of you might already have a routine where you do cross stitch every day. So put that in your time as well. Like maybe you do make the time every night for an hour, 
every day and you don't give that time up like that's your time every day put that in as well because that can also make you realize like where you are spending the time on your hobby as well so that's what i want you to do this week i just want you to notice where your time is going what you're spending your time doing um don't feel guilty or try to just be comfortable as a guilty feeling and be okay with that and then we'll get really practical then as the week goes week goes on because before we start like before I start telling you like how to fit it into your day you have to know what you're doing in your day you have to know like what your day is set up like where, where you're spending your time already I can't just say to you cross stitch every evening at 7 p.m if you work shifts and you are in work at seven o'clock obviously that won't work for you which is why it's really hard to kind of talk about time because I know we all lead such different lives um but I just want you to all notice where your time is going how much time do you have left at the end of the day after you take off everything you do is there any time even left and don't worry if there isn't because I can still help you find time to stitch even if there's no time left at the end of the day we can still change that and still help you find time where you can squeeze cross stitch in or any other hobby you have as well and i got some like really great questions that i'm gonna answer as well this week that's like talking about really specific situations that i think will help a lot of you as well um so if you do have any questions just send me a message or a dm or comment on the replay and i will like answer those as well for you um yeah and we'll get to like some specific scenarios that I've got from some people so for now though I just want you to notice and then tomorrow I'll come in just share some like practical tips share some more practical tips on Thursday answer some of your questions and yeah just hopefully help you find more time in your day to fill with cross stitch and fun and hobbies so um if you have any questions just pop them on the replay and I will speak to you tomorrow